Hello and welcome to Lapham Gymnasium for tonight's matchup between the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays and the Shawnee Indians. I'm Nate Garlock alongside the coach, Rich Benson. And Rich, we have uh, one of these matchups. It's not a conference matchup. It's on a double limit of back-to-back, -back, but we have a tremendous matchup with one of the great players in our area in Cameron Elwer. Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned earlier, he's, you know, he's 27 points a game, but he's also dishing up the ball out a lot with assists. And that's probably because of that motion offense they run. Yes, both of these teams coming off of victories last night. St. John's comes in on a six-game win streak. They are 8-1 and one overall. Shawnee knocked off Salina last night, still undefeated in the Western Buckeye League, 6-4 and four overall. They begin with the basketball. Take a look at the starting lineups. First for the Indians. And after Nick Pajon's three-point shot, no good. Rebound down to Berkey, and he's able to put that in. Beckett Berkey gets a scoring started with two. Yeah, that offensive rebound, second chance points are really important. And an immediate turnover on the other end by the Indians. Berkey goes into attack mode. He's going to be tied up. Possession arrow favors the Blue Jays. Nate, both of these programs are just pretty well-established programs. You know, so this is always a good game because the coaches have been there for a while and they're, they're kind of established programs. They're fun to watch. Blue Jays with the basketball. They're starting five tonight. Looks like this. Number five, Colin Feathers. Number 11, Cam Elwer. Number 12, Austin Mentor. Number 23, Andrew Elwer. And number 33, Aaron Mentor. So St. John's still not able to get things going offensively. The Indians come down. Goldsberry down low. Gets it in off the backboard. And they're out to the 4 nothing lead. And St. John's also hit one shot at the, at the basket. And they're doing a great job blocking out with Shawnee. Blue Jays with the basketball, trying to see if they can't get some points here. A little hesitation by Elwer. He has that one blocked from behind, but ends up back into the hands of Mentor. He kicks that one out, but loses it. And the Indians come up with another turnover. Take a look at Shawnee's starters tonight. They're going to start number zero, Trevick Berkey, the freshman. Number two, Nick Pajon. Number four, Dominic Lynch. Number 23, Beckett Berkey. And number 34, Alex Goldsberry. Just a little lob from the wing, a little just a little too much on it. So a quick start here for the Indians, which I think is going to be important because they got to find a way to slow down Cam Elwer. As you mentioned, Rich, a little over 27 points per game coming in tonight, over eight rebounds a game, also leads this team in assists, shooting over 65% from the floor, does just about everything you could want from a basketball player and really leads this St. John's team. Yeah. Little trap on that ball screen, and they got some length on Cam with uh, Travis Berkey. I wonder how much, you know, that's, that might give him a little problem. Three point shot on its way. And Andrew Elwer gets his first points and the Blue Jays' first points of the night. 4 3, Shawnee on top. And here's Dominic Lynch working against Elwer. On post action, cross screen for a post touch. Three-point try on its way. Travick Berkey can't connect, but right there is Dominic Lynch. The senior cleans it up and gets the putback for two. St. John's comes down quickly, but we're going to have a whistle. I believe this one is going to go on Max Goldsberry, and it is. That is going to be his first, team's first of the quarter. Substitutions coming in for both teams. Tate Bender coming in for Shawnee. Number 24, Joel Schrader. And number 10, Drew Boggs coming in for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Cameron Elwer is going to try to get it off the bounce, I think. See, there we go with the drive. Great help coming over by Goldsberry, but he is going to quickly pick up his second foul. It was the right idea as Elwer drove, tried to get into the lane. He was getting worked uh, against by Beckett Berkey. Saw Goldsberry kind of slide over there late for the help and just a little bit too much contact. Yeah. And Elwer goes to the free throw line for the first time tonight. He's able to connect. I think we're going to see a lot of dribble penetration with Cameron Elwer tonight. Alex Goldsberry with his two fouls is going to take a seat. Checking into the game for him is Max Goldsberry. As Elwer is able to go perfect on that trip from the free throw line. Back to a one point game, 6 5, 5 10 left to go here in the opening quarter. Dominic Lynch brings it up for the Indians. Berkey able to gather that one in before it goes out of bounds. Beckett moves around with that left hand. 
St. John's doing a nice job with this man-to-man -man defense, not yeah. giving the Indians a lot of space at all. That's their trademark man-to-man. -man. Shawnee's come down second time in a row offensively and called a set to start their offense. Trevick takes the lead. Nice feed on the inside by Beckett to his brother Trevick. And he finishes, gets it to go down, and going to make a trip to the free throw line. So Delphus needed to have a little bit better help side there on that one, Nate. They, they, that's twice now Shawnee's tried to get that lob over the top. The freshman Trevick Berkey, who has started since day one for this season, just continues to get better, able to knock the and one down. Shawnee back on top four. Blue Jays look like they want to try to get things going to the inside. Shawnee doing a nice job of closing yeah. those passing lanes. Wide open three, look, and it goes down. Nice job by Austin Mental. Yeah, that was a misdirection play, and they had a staggered screen on the other side, and he came off that staggered screen real well and was wide open. Back and forth, we continue to go. St. John's keeps this one close, just down one. See Travis Berkey for the drive, gets that off the glass for two. Kind of a motion offense look that time down the floor. A great job by Dominic Lynch to reach in and tie up Cam Elwer as he tried to drive through the lane. The possession arrow favors the Indians, and they get another turnover. Let's see if they run out of a set here. Yes, they're going to run out of another set. Back at Berkey, he brings it up. Works against Austin Mentor, gets rid of it. Here's Trevitt. He's trying to swing it. Dom going to work baseline. Runs out of space. Had to get rid of it. And you see Mentor just turn around, and the ball was right there, able to gather it in. Pretty good transition defense for Shawnee. Elwer sets the screen. High lobbing shot by Drew Bongs off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Indians. Here's Bender. Bender looks to drive into the lane. Stops, adjusts. Gets it off the glass. A nice touch with the right hand by Tate Bender. That was a real good step under move. Coming down on the other end, Cam Elwer into attack mode. Hasn't been able to get a shot to go from the field yet, but he's going to make his second trip to the free throw line. Travis Burke going to be whistled for that foul. That's his first, team's third of the quarter. We'll see how Cam responds. I think, I don't think Trevor Berkey's guarding him anymore. I think they switched up that. That's kind of why he was driving with, he had a little more length on him with, with Trevor Berkey. Yeah, they, they switched length for, I think, strength yeah, that time and, as you see Dominic Lynch guarding him. And a little bit and, stronger, not quite as long, but a lot more and, physical type of player. And, and probably a little quicker as well. Elwer continues to be perfect from the free throw line. Four for four here in the quarter. 13-10, three-point deficit. Just over three minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. Beckett working against Brady Klaus, who's come into the game for the Blue Jays. Yeah, that's a kind of a clear out into a cross screen. They're, they're definitely, they definitely want to go low with the post touch. Berkey trying to work through traffic. Can't get around the defense, has to come back through the other side as St. John's continues to do a nice job with that man-to-man. -man. Trevitt came clear after a screen. Can't get that one to go down. He gets fouled, make a trip to the free throw line. Andrew Elwer is going to get called for the foul. His second. It is St. John's second of the quarter as well. That two fouls, Andrew Elwer is going to check out. See Cam Elwer switch over, come down into the lane. Number two, Tice McLean has come into the game for St. John's. Delph was playing a really good man-to-man, -man, kind of crowded the lanes and, and definitely put pressure on the ball, but that was a great cut by, by Beckett Berkey. Berkey goes one for two that trip. Back out to a four-point lead. Here's Elwer. Has to get rid of it. You saw Shawnee not really double team, but kind of have the, the tight man defense and a little bit of a shadow over top by Beckett Berkey that time. They're giving him all the attention that he deserves. 
John's able to get out of trouble that time. Going to have to pull it and reset and the offense. like they're going to want Once again, that was a little misdirection with the skip pass. But they were going to try to seal Cam Elwer a little bit down low on the block. The crowd here in Lapham Denazing appreciate the defensive effort by the Indians. And now Dominic Lynch frustrated. He knows he got the foul that time. He had a clean look at the ball in Cam Elwer's hands. But Yeah, they really, uh, I think they, Shawnee did a great job of crowding the floor defensively there. Pretty really in the help lanes for that drive. Nice, strong defensive effort, but then it ends up being all for naught as the foul gets called, and St. John's now have a chance to inbound from underneath their own basket. They had a wide open look underneath as Aaron Mentor had come wide open but missed him. So now they're going to have to reset. Hesitation move that time, kicks it back out. And comes in ball screen. They switched on that ball screen. Shawnee switched. Elwer off the front of the rim. Offensive rebound comes down to the Blue Jays. Step back and good. Really good body control on that step back out of Cam. He doesn't need a lot of space to create, and he showed it right there. Dominic Lynch comes down and shows that he can do it too. A step back of his own. He gets that one to go. Elwer quickly down the floor. That one bounces around, falls out. Shawnee comes up with the rebound. Pushes numbers. up ahead to Lynch. And Lynch just a little bit too much on that one as Tate can't gather that one in. It's going to go back to the Blue Jays. So the last two trips down the floor, the Blue Jays got a couple offensive rebounds for some second chance points. I think they're going to have to attempt to do that a little bit more. See the double team coming quickly as they tried to get that one out of St. John's hands. Elwood did a nice job recovering. You can see this defense from Shawnee is really having to work. It'll be yeah. interesting to see if they can keep up this same level energy. That one's going to rattle out. Can't connect. Rebound comes down to Berkey. 30 seconds left to go. The Indians have an opportunity here. If they want, they're going to hold for the last shot. They have the four-point lead. Okay, here comes a set here. Lynch comes up. Traffic's going to clear out to the wing. Looking for the one-on-one -on -one against Mentor. Gets it over to Tate. They're going to continue to swing, trying to go baseline. Hazon comes open up at the top. Can't get that one to go. McLean with the rebound. Going to have time. Pulls up for three. And no good as that one bounces off the back of the iron. We have played one quarter. It's been a fast pace up and down the floor. Shawnee is on top, 16 to 12. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Welcome back to Lapham Gymnasium here at Shawnee High School. Nate Garlock alongside Rich Benzman. And Rich, it was a fast paced, a lot of action going on. Shawnee did a nice job of containing Cam Elwer. And when we say containing, he still had six points in the quarter, but he didn't really seem to have the same effect. On the other side, Shawnee got the offense going early as we saw Beckett and Trevick Berkey able to get going underneath. Yeah, and, and Shawnee early on got a couple offensive boards to get some second chance points. And since then, Delphi's done a little bit better job of blocking out. But with Cam Elwer, Shawnee, when he's got the basketball in his hand, they're really crowding the floor on him. They're getting in all the lanes to stop the drive. So a very strong defensive effort by the Indians. We'll see if it continues here in the second. Elwer gets an open look at three. That is the most space he has had all night, yeah. and he cashes it in. He made a little flare cut there, and it kind of... Dominic Lynch does a great job. As that lane came wide open for him, and he's able to drive and get the two. Yeah, Trevick Berkey tried to go under that, and... Cam Elwer did a good job last trip down the floor of making a flare cut, and he was wide open for the three. St. John's with the basketball here, their second possession of the quarter. Nice job coming over by Trevick Berkey as he cut that one off. That three-pointer is going to be no good fight for the rebound, and it's going to go back to Shawnee. And 
We've had some traffic out of bounds. Pretty good job of blocking out there with Shawnee. Colin Feathers checking back into the game for the Blue Jays. He's guarding Lynch. Just underway here in the second quarter. St. John's playing that really tough man-to-man. Three-point Three shot Three. is good. Back at Berkey able to get that three-pointer down. That's his first of the game. He now has five on the night. Elwer. He has that little natural fade in his shot that is just impossible to defend. Yeah, and he's even got with, you know, 6'5", Trevor Berkey on him. You know, that's that's a pretty strong move. It creates a little space, some separation um, offensively, and he, he's able to get that off. It's a really nice, he elevates really nicely and has really good form on that step back move. So Coach Elwer takes the quick timeout here in the second. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So Coach Elwer wants to take the quick timeout after the made shot by Cam Elwer. He saw the Indians continuing with this defensive pressure, wasn't happy with the offensive output despite the made basket. Wanted to get some things changed and... You can tell he's a little fired up on the sidelines over there. I think he just wanted to kind of reiterate a few things to his team. Well, they picked up a little early now, full court. And I think that's what he might was emphasizing, getting after him a little bit defensively. Five-second call goes against the Indians. So that's what you want as a coach. You call the timeout. You want the defensive intensity to pick up. They come out and immediately get the turnover. Yeah, because the last offensive trip before that one, Beckett came open pretty easily. Beckett Berkey for that shot. That's probably what Coach Elwell was pretty upset about. Elwell works against Berkey. That one's off the front of the rim. Fight for the rebound. Another offensive rebound for the Blue Jays. Here's Boggs. Has to get rid of it. So now we're seeing Shawnee has made a switch again. We saw Berkey guarding him early, then it was Lynch. It's back to Beckett Berkey as they were going for the length against Elwer. He had to get rid of it that time. Nice floater in the lane by Klaus, but he can't get that one to go down. Five forty left to go here in the half. Shawnee with the lead. Lynch and works against Boggs. I think that's exactly what Coach Elwer was talking about is don't let Shawnee come down and execute their stuff offensively. So the initial call said out uh, on Delphus St. John's, but the officials get together. They're going to change the call, and then they're going to go back to the Blue Jays. So last couple defensive trips down have been a nice effort coming out of that timeout. So whatever Coach Elwer said in that huddle is resonating with his team right now. Nice touch pass to the inside, off the glass. Joel Schrader able to get his first two of the night. That was a great slip screen. He just slipped it right to the basket and he came wide open. Now obviously Cam Elwar going to the corner drew a lot of attention to that corner. Trevor Berkey tries to go baseline, he gets cut off. Throws the long pass out to Beckett. He's, he's able to get the three-pointer to go down. Elwar comes quickly. He kicks it out, Boggs for three. That one's no good, but he's on there for the rebound. Oh, gets it over to Bender. Bender has it poked away. Not sure if he can grab it or not. He didn't want to risk the turnover, so trying to get the pass ends up back in the hands of the Blue Jays. And we're going to have a charge. Cam Elwer is going to pick up that offensive foul. Great job by Sean E to draw that, as there was a lot going on down low. Three, three guys around him right when he was driving. We're going to start this uh, offensive series with a, a down screen on the left side. And then a lot of action around the free throw line as far as motion, but they, Delphi St. John's doing a great job defensively. Yeah, they really are. And you see Coach Triplett wanting to take the timeout, not happy with how the offense was set up. So Coach Triplett's going to talk to his team as Coach Elmer did early 
We'll start. We'll step aside as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. I'd like to thank tonight's instant replay sponsor, Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. So we saw Coach Elwer take a timeout earlier and get the defensive effort out of his team that he wanted. This time it was Coach Triplett on the offensive side of things wanting to talk to his team. Yeah. We'll see if it has the same results. And Coach Elwer, when he, oh, he emphasized, don't let Shawnee come down and run their stuff. Got to get, in the, get into them a little bit because when they run their stuff, they've, they've had some really good looks. And there good they got it. Yep. And a wide open look underneath the basket, but it gets poked away. And really good side-to-side -side basketball there for Shawnee. There's nice that. slip pass yeah. underneath, looking for Schrader. He can't handle the pass as it goes out of bounds, but great vision by Cam Elworth. That's the second offensive series where they kind of had a little slip screen and kind of got basket wide open. Feathers just giving a little bit of pressure to Lynch as right. he's able to get it into the front court. This one's going to get knocked away. And it'll stay with the Indians. Let's see if uh, Shawnee can get a little bit side-to-side -side basketball like they did, change the floor. Yep. That one was read all the yep. way. Great job by Boggs as he got that off the side of the rim. And I think that was a good no call as yeah. that one did not look like it was, it was going to go into the basket as Berkey works around the screen and finishes at the rim. Really good drive left, good finish. So Beckett Birkin now has eight points in the quarter. And Cam Elwer Cam, again with that step back move. Yeah, but Cam Elwer comes right back down with an answer though. 26, 21, 320 left to go here in the quarter. Turnaround jumper by Trevick Berkey. That one's no good. Rebound comes into the hand of Elwer. Brings it up for the Blue Jays. Works against Beckett. He pulls up. Good. Cameron Elwer with just a, it, it's just, it's a fun shot to watch as, you know, you've seen a lot of basketball in yeah. your time, and some kids are just natural at it. There is no force in that fadeaway. That's just how he shoots, and it is so difficult to defend. Yeah, because he really gets, he gets pretty good elevation, and he gets good separation. Meanwhile, Trevick Berkey comes down. He has a great answer from behind the arc as he gets that three-pointer to go. The offenses were a little slow to get going here in the quarter, but definitely picked up here in the last few minutes. Trevick Berkey picked up that foul, and it's his second. Shawnee's just got to continue to crowd the floor when, when Cam Elwer drives to the basketball. Now we're making his third trip to the free throw line. He's able to get that one to go. Lots of substitutions coming back in and towards the end of the half. St. John's has some pretty good depth on that bench as you see Coach Elwer going to it right here. And that one's going to get waved off as we're going to have a lane violation on St. John's. So. Elward got the shot to go down, but the point will go on the board, and the Indians get the basketball. Is that uh, starting that offense with that down screen, cross screen, and then a staggered screen for the reversal? There's that motion offense all around the kind of the elbow of the free throw line. Shawnee trying to be deliberate with these passes, seeing if they can't get some space. And we're going to have a foul as Tate Bender went to work down low. But Tice McLean, he's going to pick up his first. Offensively, that, that offense, they have a lot of staggered screens that develop, and they also have a lot of screens around the elbow area in which they can look to curl it at times. And Trevick Berkey was going to curl that, but he saw that his teammate was driving the basketball with the kind of the open post. Kane able to connect on his first. One more free throw coming. Molojo comes into the game for Shawnee. Second shot is up, and it is good. 
Shawnee extends the lead, 31-24. They've done a great job on the defensive end of things. Looking there to close out the half quickly. Demola gets in there, takes it right away from Elwer. Great hands by Demola that time as he took that one right out of the dribble. Three-pointer on its way. And Beckett Berkey connects on another one. And Shawnee right now opening things up. Cam's probably got to get, just get rid of it a little earlier and then get it back. I mean, that's one of the downfalls of having a player that's as dominant as Cam Elwer. Everybody knows where the game plan is. Everybody knows where the basketball is going to go. So as the season goes on and teams adjust, you got to find new ways of being yeah. able to get him open. But you've seen he doesn't need a lot of space. But right now, coming off the basketball, Shawnee is doing a tremendous job of disrupting what he wants to do. Yeah. Well, a little side-to-side -side action, I think, with, the, with his dribble, I think, caused those last two turnovers. Klaus gets rid of it. Here's McLean. He drives baseline. Pull-up jumper. No good. Gamola comes up with a rebound. He's going to fight for it. Pulls it down. And this one is going to be... It looked like it was going to be taken away, but we're going to have a foul as Tyus McLean is going to get whistled for his second. And Shawnee will get the basketball. Here's Matthew Stiles. He's come into the game for Shawnee. Takes the inbounds. Gets it back over to Bender. Ten-point deficit, largest lead of the game for the Indians. 34-24, minute 15 left to go here in the half. They did a pretty good job of denying that first lead pass to the wing because that starts their entire offense. And that's what Delphus is trying to do is, is try to get in the lanes to disrupt them, like right there. So, now Beck at that time was looking to take that one as I think he wanted to pull up and get that one to go down, but couldn't handle the pass. And Shawnee is fortunate and that went off the Blue Jays, so they're going to maintain possession. Travick Berkey coming back into the game. We're going to have an offensive foul. This one's going to go against Ojo. Yeah, he's just a little bit, he moved just a little bit on that screen. Final minute here of the half. St. John's trying to see if they can't close this 10-point deficit. Oh, Feathers Force works against there. Styles. Elwer, he's got the double team, and the help comes over. He's going to have to try to dribble out of it, and they didn't give him any room. Usually, a lot of times, you'll see teams kind of pull off of that double team, but not that time. They followed him all the way around to the top of the key. Yeah. They started that offensive series looking like they wanted to get a post touch with Cam. Now it's just going to be... One four across. Wide open look for three. Goes down as Aaron Mentor is able to connect. Ten seconds left to go. Beckett Berkey brings it up the floor. He's going to pull up for three. That one's going to be no good. Long rebound comes down to Boggs. Gets it over to Elwer. Elwer works quickly. Hangs in the air for the shot. And that one's going to be no good. The first half comes to a close. It is a tight one, but a seven-point Shawnee lead here at halftime. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Lappin Gymnasium. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Third quarter underway here at Shawnee. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Ace Hardware. Three locations to serve you. 242 North Main Street in Delphus, 3700 South Dixie Highway in Shawnee, and 3720 Elida Road in Lima. Shawnee started with the basketball, but a quick turnover there. And as you see, that defensive pressure that we saw pretty much that entire first half can pick up right where it left off. Right, and they, uh, it, St. John's did a great job of anticipating that pass. You're going to see it again because they're setting a lot of screens around the free throw area, and that's where and that's where the Blue Jays came right through the passing lane and stole it. So they knew that was coming. St. John's has the basketball here. Here's Andrew Elwer trying to work through the screen, find some space. 
with some tight defense of their own as Trevick Berkey got his hand on that one to knock it out of bounds. Yeah, that probably was stressed and was an adjustment at halftime by Coach Elwell because they, they actually really read that well defensively last series. It's a very fast-paced first half as the first quarter, we didn't see any time the type of timeouts or stoppages, only a few trips to the free throw lines. These offenses got up and down the floor quickly. A little bit more of a slower start there in the second as Mentor's shot goes down. Nice adjustment as he stepped inside the three-point line to get that one to go down. It's a good uh, shot fake. 34-29, Shawnee on top. You see how they're disrupting that? They're trying to re reversal. You can immediately see some of the adjustments that Coach Elwer yeah. talked about at halftime with his team as they're putting it into play. And Shawnee right now having a hard time on offense. Here's Lynch, gets it over to Faison. Nick looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Yeah, I think Shawnee wanted to try to execute a high low there and they weren't able to get it. Looking for the back door. As we're going to have a foul prior to the shot as Beckett Berkey was going towards the basket. He gets fouled. Shawnee will take it out underneath their own room. Yeah, with that motion offense that Shawnee's running, and a lot of those screens are set by that free throw line. That's exactly what St. John's is taking away. That foul is on Colin Feathers. That is his first of the game. Screen the screener action there on that out-of-bounds play. St. John's defense is just relentless. They play such tight man-to-man, -man and there's so few whistles. But another foul as that is the second one here on this trip on the floor as a Beckett Berkey is going to make a trip to the free throw line. Feathers quickly picks up his second foul as he had gone the whole first half without drawing a whistle. But yeah, and you see that a lot. And you, the, he was the one that was on the ball handler, and Cam Elwer came over and had the help there. And a lot of times you see that happen where the guy that's on the ball handler just gets a little too aggressive. He already had his help there. Beckett missed the first, makes the second. He now has 17 points on the night. Elwer trying to go somewhere with it. Double team coming down in the corner. Yeah, they're Elwer. face guarding Cam Elwer right now, not letting him get the ball back. Here's Boggs trying to move through some traffic, drops it off to Mentor. Little head fake that time, kicks it over to Boggs. Boggs shot, no good. Beckett Berkey goes up to try to get the rebound, but that one's going to get knocked out of bounds by Aaron Mentor and back to the Indians. So there's an adjustment, I think, for Shawnee at halftime. They're really face guarding Cam Elwer. Cam Elwer had 16 points in the first half, most of those coming in the second quarter. Actually want to try to slow him down a little bit here as they have the lead. Lynch passes it back out. Beckett's three-point shot up and good. What a quick catch and shoot from Beckett Berkey. Yeah, that was a great job of playing inside-out basketball, Nate. They got the ball down low, and it was a good kick out. Trevick Berkey just picked up a big foul as he now has three with 5.20 left to go. He's going to have to take a seat as Tate Bender comes back into the game. They're going to run that flex cut off of that out of bounds, and they got it. Nice look on the inside by Mentor. Can't get it to go. Offense rebounds into the news hands. No good. Elwer comes up with it. Up and under by Elwer. No good, but he's going to go to the free throw line. Again, there's a, a great job on the offensive boards by the Blue Jays. They got some, an opportunity for some second chance points now because they rebound the ball a little bit. I see Coach Tripleth not really happy uh, with the blocking out of Shawnee. Yeah, you can tell he is not excited at all about that effort underneath the basket. They had three opportunities to get a rebound, but St. John's came away with all of them, and quite frankly, you can understand why Coach Triple is frustrated, at least out on the way that the floor looks right now. Shawnee has the height advantage down low. They should be able to get to those. But Delphus does a nice job. Elwer went to the free throw line, able to connect on both. 
And they're looking for a post touch now. Back it down into the corner of Goldsberry. Goldsberry had to sit most of the first half with two fouls. I'd like to get him going here in the third quarter. That was a really good skip when they were doubling the post. Definitely want to take care of this mismatch, I think. Lynch tried to drive. Can't get that one to go. Rebound comes down to the Blue Jays. Three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be no good. High off the back of the backboard. And it'll go back to the Indians. Coach Elmer not happy with the call. He doesn't think that it went over the back of it. Yeah, that, that time he had a little bit breakdown in Shawnee's transition defense. And yeah, it's kind of a left to shoot her wide open on the wing. So they got, got away with one there. Bender for three. That one's going to rattle in, out, and then back in as Tate Bender gets the three pointer to go. There it is again. Back out to a 10 point lead. St. John's quickly. Comes down, gets a shot off, but no good. As the Indians going to look to extend their lead here. Four minutes left to go in the third. Bender puts the brakes on. Has to get it back over to Goldsberry. Goldsberry finds a cutting Lynch. Lynch, turn around. Jumper, no good. Fight for the, excuse me, fight for the loose ball is going to end up going back to the Blue Jays. Yeah, now Shawnee there, the, the adjustment they're making is they're off of that screen by the elbow area slash free throw line. They're now curling that to the basket. Max Goldsberry come into the game. As you see Damola Ojo coming in for the Indians. McLean reverses the ball. As Klaus, guarded tightly by Dominic Lynch, has to get rid of it. Yeah. And almost a turnover by St. John's as Schrader hit the floor. Yeah. And we're going to have a timeout. Coach Elward didn't like how the offense was looking. Takes the timeout to not lose the possession. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. I'd also like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Ace Hardware. They have three locations to serve you, 242 North Main Street in Delphus, 3700 South Dixie Highway in Shawnee, and 3720 Elida Road in Lima. Coach Elmer takes the timeout, wants to get the offense reset and see what they drew up in the huddle. Yeah, Shawnee, the last series, came out with a little defensive pressure themselves. They're jumping into that driving lane to reverse the basketball. That's causing some problems for them. So Berkey come a long way there to try to get the trap. St. John's did a nice job getting out of it. But right now, still having trouble finding space. McLean has to get rid of it. He's up into the hands of Klaus. He's going to work against Ojo, drops it off to Schrader. Schrader high off the glass, and he's going to be fouled. Mola went up for the challenge, but got a little bit too much contact there as he came down. So Schrader going to go to the free throw line. This will be his first trip tonight. Yeah, that's, that's the adjustment I think Shawnee made defensively, is, and that's why Coach Elwell had to take that time out, because they jumped into the driving lane and the passing lane, and they almost traveled with the basketball. But that's what they're doing now. They're not letting the ball get reversed as easily. That's kind of what Shawnee's come out with out of that timeout. Schrader off the front of the rim on both of his shots, so empty trip that time. Lynch quickly drives left hand, tries to go with the right off the glass. That one's no good. Elwer going to try to get down the floor quick. Nice adjustment in the air to get around Goldsberry and gets it to go down. Really good body control on that finish. 2.30 left to go here in the third. Shawnee on top, 41-33. Lynch working against Klaus. Oh, they're, they're on that screen now, they're either curling or they're flaring it. And that's going to st stop the kind of pressure that they're getting for the reversal. Max Goldberry tries to drive as he 
had Joel Schrader on the defensive assignment, and he's going to get fouled. Now Max Goldsberry, so far scoreless on the night, but going to make his trip to the free throw line to see if he can change that. Goldsberry first shot is up, and it is no good. Aaron Mentor coming back into the game for St. John's. Goldsberry second shot on its way, and it is good. 42-33, nine-point lead for the Indians. Elworth's going to drive, and we're going to have a foul prior to that as Ojo's going to get whistled for it. That was a really great use of the screen by Cam. The ball is going to take a seat. Or no, he's not. He's just going to go over and talk about they substituted him out. He's going to go over and get some coaching from Coach Bender. Elwood's first shot is up and good as he continues to be perfect from the free throw line tonight. He now has a game high 21. Our second shot is good. St. John sticking around, trying to keep this one close. Really yeah. tried to deny that lead pass there to the wing. Beckett Berkey works with the left hand. Defender falls off. Pull-up jumper, no good. Rebound comes down to Klaus. He's going to push the tempo. That's it. Elwer kicks it down into the corner. His feathers three-point try is going to be blocked out of bounds by Lynch. Nice closeout by Dom. Kind of went into a kind of a 1-4 flat there for the driving lane for Cam Elwer. It's a little spread seam kicking out because it looked yeah, like he yeah. had beaten Ojo off the ball there and was going to have a clean look at it. <laughs> so when he had the wide open lane, he passed it. He gave him three defenders, though. He took all of them on and got that one to go. Yeah, that's just a good fadeaway. A little bit of a run here by St. John's. They have gotten this down to just a five-point deficit. See the St. John's faithful rising to their feet, trying to cheer this defense on to get another stop. Yeah, they're really, St. John's really working hard to deny the lead pass and also the reversal. Let's see what they do on this ball screen. Oh, he doesn't use it. That's probably smart. Berkey changed direction to get into the lane. Looked like he wanted to drive baseline. Does a great job to make the adjustment and got a great look inside. Yeah. Now we're going to have a charge on the other side against Elwer. Ojo doing a great job of holding his ground and picking up that offensive foul. That is Elwer's second foul, team's fourth of the quarter. Yeah, Beckett Berkey last trip down the floor did a great job refusing the screen and driving baseline. He's trying to start with this down screen. They're trying to really deny that wing, that lead pass. Under 30 left to go here in the quarter. Goldsberry with the basketball. Gets it down to Lynch into the corner. Shawnee would like to hold this one here for the last shot if they can. Lynch guarded tightly by Elwer. Moving around, trying to get a little bit of space. Looks for the drive, steps back. Gets it down to Berkey. He's going to drive baseline. And he's going to get fouled. This one's going to go against Feathers. It'll be his third. That is the team's fifth year of the quarter. It was a big foul by Feathers as Beckett Berkey now is going to have a chance to go to the free throw line to shoot two thanks to the new uh, foul rules that I think we're all still trying to get a little used to here this year. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Beckett's had, Beck Berkey has had some success on off the bounce the last two trips down the floor. With that first one short, second one is good. Nice adjustment by Berkey. Becky Berkey is going to take a seat. Five seconds left in this one. McLean going quick, pull up jumper. 
Got that it. one's going to be good at the buzzer. Nice touch by Tice McClain to get that one to go. That's going to make it a six-point deficit. One quarter left to go. 45-39, Shawnee on top. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Simmons Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Also like to thank tonight's instant replay sponsor, Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Fourth quarter underway here at Lapham Gymnasium. Elwer coming out firing, can't get that three-pointer to go. Rebound ends up in the hands of Shawnee. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Ace Hardware. Three locations to serve you. 242 North Main Street in Delphus, 3700 South Dixie Highway in Shawnee, and 3720 Elina Road in Lima. Elwer with the pass up ahead to Monter, and he gets that one to go down. Good, good job running the floor there. It's been really fun to watch how each of these teams have been making adjustments on each other. Just a four-point game, the closest it's been in some time. Shawnee looking to have an answer here as the defense of St. John's has caused them problems here in the second half. Trying to get a seal with Lynch down low. Nice lob inside, but they're going to get Dominic Lynch with the push-off. He's going to pick up his... Second, I believe, no, it's going to be his third, excuse me. So Lynch picks up the offensive foul. Now we're going to bring it up for St. John's to see if he can't make this a one possession game. Blue Jays have done a nice job to keep oh. this one close. They got three guys on him. The trap comes and he's able to pass out of it. And now we're going to have another whistle as Bender's going to get whistled for the foul. So second team foul already here in the quarter. It's going to be Bender's first foul. Shawnee's going to have to make some adjustments on defense as Boggs is left open for the three. That one can't go down. And Lynch comes up with the rebound. A little transition of their own. And a great job by Beckett Berkey. Doesn't even bother with the dribble. A couple of big steps as he finishes with a layup. And he's going to go to the free throw line to try to get the end one. It's just a great job kind of running right down the middle of the floor, then choosing the lane. And it's a good pass. Get able to make the and one to push us back out to a seven point lead. Nice answer by the Indians. Now we're touch pass to the inside of Monster. Step back shot is up and good. But an Indian player is on the floor. And there was some contact down low. That was Alex Goldsberry. He took the contact. He looks to be okay. Venter got that one to go down, make it uh, back to a five-point deficit. Yeah, that was a really good action by St. John's. They kind of hit the wing, had a back screen into a ball screen, and then he kind of refused it and, and slipped the screen. He was wide open. See if they run out of that again next trip down the floor. Oh, there's that curl. Nice feed to Berkey. It's back at Berkey, finishes at the rim again. Yeah. That's an adjustment they made for that, is to curl that or to, or to fade it. Elwer had to fight through some traffic, couldn't get it to go down, but got its own rebound as Cameron Elwer continues to carry this Blue Jay offense. Berkey doing a great job of his own to carry the Indian offense. Three straight baskets by Beck, and Berkey has this back out to a seven-point lead, and we got a timeout on the floor. 52-45, Shawnee on top. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Welcome back to Lapin Gymnasium. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Rich Benzman. It's been everything we thought it was going to be. Fast-paced action. The offenses have shined at times. The defenses have shined for a lot of the time on both sides. It has been a great game as we move here through the fourth quarter. St. John's is keeping this one close, but the Indians are doing a great job of answering. Yeah, they really are. But it's, it's been fun, like I said earlier, to watch the adjustments that each coach is making. Uh, Beckett got to the basket twice on a transition and then a curl cut. Nice steal that time by Dominic Lynch as he read that pass, was able to get his hand on it and take it away. Trevitt guarded tightly by Elwer. Looking for some space, drops it off to Goldsberry. See, that's, that time he flared it. That's how they're stopping that pressure for that reversal, either curling or flaring it around that free throw line area. A little bounce pass. Bender feeds Goldberry on the inside, works against Menzer. That one's up, but no good. Lynch there for the rebound, and he's going to get fouled. Dominic Lynch is going to go to the free throw line. Lynch has eight points so far tonight. Looking to see if he can't get to the double digits here. Dominic Lynch does a lot for this team. That shot is up and no good. The senior. Really a physical presence. Strong, yeah. Especially from that guard position. Yeah, he, he's really strong with the ball. And they also is strong down low. Her shot was no good. Makes the adjustment on the second, and it goes down. Eight-point deficit. And John's looking for some space. Feathers kicks it out to Boggs. Boggs feeds Mentor down low. He's going to work against Goldsberry. A little head fake as that one doesn't go, but we're going to have a whistle. And I believe this one's going to go on Goldsberry. That is going to be his fourth of the night as Aaron Mentor is going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, he just moved that hand and that arm in slightly when he really didn't need to because Travick Berkey was kind of there for the help. And he's 6'5 and has got decent length. Mentor doesn't connect on the first. Second one on its way, and this one is good. Klaus coming back into the game for the Blue Jays as Boggs will take a seat. They're going to pick up now full court, pick up early, deny the basketball. They're face guarding the basketball and bounds. 4.30 left to go here in the game. St. John's knows they need to manufacture some possessions if they can. Nice cross screen, kind of down screen, cross screen action there. That's a little new action. Trying to find Beckett down low. He's going to fight through three different players. Gets it up, but that one's going to go off the rim. No good. Rebound ends up in the hands of St. John's. And you thought about the three for a second. Decides to pull it down. Here's Elwer. Good job by Lynch cutting him off. It kind of... Drove the wrong way there. He had the driving lane to the right, and he went left. I think that might have been a quick whistle by the officials. I, yeah. I can see why Coach Elwer's upset. It was a great job by Andrew Elwer to keep his dribble as yeah. he lost his footing. And I think that was more of an anticipation whistle than anything. Yeah, I, I, I'm, that, that was not obviously a travel. He was. He kept his dribble alive the entire time, when, even when he went down on the floor. Coach Elward not happy, wants to take the timeout so he can talk to his team and regathers everybody. We'll take the step, or we'll take the timeout as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Ace Hardware. They have three locations to serve you, 242 North Main Street, Delphus, 3700 South Dixie Highway in Shawnee, and 3720 Elida Road in Lima. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. 
So Delphus once again picks up in, a, in full court pressure. Shawnee lined up 1-4 across the free throw line and had a few, two people go long. Great hustle by Lynch to save that one from going out. St. John's ends up coming away with the basketball. Klaus looks to drive, kicks it down into the corner. Three-point try off the side of the rim. Feathers with the rebound. Another opportunity. His shot's going to be no good as well, and we're going to have a whistle down low. Coach Triplett is not happy as time and time again we continue to see St. John's give themselves second and third opportunities. Yep. And that's that's big in a, in a game that's, that's this close. Going to have an official timeout. See, see what they do this time, uh, Shawnee, defensively, if they poach on that lob. Max Goldsberry coming into the game. Alex Goldsberry is going to take a seat. I think the guards are going to go flare to the corner, though. It's coming back to the little flex cut action there, and they got it again, wide open. Had a great look on the inside, but not able to finish with Mentor, and then we're going to have a whistle. Yeah. That's twice now they ran that flex action out of that out of bounds, and they've they, they've gotten it each time. They just didn't score the bucket. Now you'll see a one-four line up, and they're going to send someone long. That doesn't allow anybody to poach on the ball as far as just. Feathers did a great job to reach around and poke that one away. Elwer trying to get that floater in, but Trevick Burkett getting up high to just get his fingertips on that one. And that's going to be another foul when it's all said and done as Aaron Runcer is going to pick up his fourth. So they're going to line up in the one four again. Beckett Berkey gets it up over the timeline. Works against Elwer. Berkey gets into the lane, does a great job to avoid the contact that gets that one to go down. Beckett Berkey having a big night. He has 32. And we're going to have a whistle. This one's going to go against Lynch. And Dominic Lynch, I believe, just picked up his fourth foul. Yeah, he's not happy about it, Mike. I think he was moving just a little bit. Then the big question is, is how much, did, you know, did the offensive dribbler, what Cam Elwell, get into him to create that? But Cam Elwell able to connect. As he has had a big night from the free throw line. He continues to be perfect. And has 27 points on the night as well. Elwer trying to keep his team in this game as he connects again. 55-48. Every time St. John's has made a run or even gotten close, though, it seems like Beckett Berkey has decided he's going to take over and he's been able to help push the Indian lead out a little farther. When they send, ooh, when they send two people long like that, it, it's easier to get the ball in bounds after that cross screen because they can't deny it as hard. Have a timeout. Coach Triplett wants to take the timeout. We'll take it as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay sponsors Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Coach Triplett called a timeout there. Didn't like the look he was getting from his team offensively. And they're going to have another whistle here as officials really keeping this one tight. This one is going to go against Andrew Elwer. And with that being the 15th foul of the quarter, the Indians will be shooting free throws for every foul here on out. Pesh on. First shot on its way. That one's going to be no good. Aaron Munter coming back into the game for St. John's. Pesh on's second shot is up. And that one's no good as well. Elwer with the rebound. 2.30 left to go in the game. He's going to drive. He had a...
just fouled out of the game. That's a big loss for the Indians. 2.24 left to go. He's going to have to sit the rest of this one. And Elwood's going to have the in one opportunity. That was a pretty much a design kind of look where they had the four spread, leaving a kind of a wide open lane for Cam Elwood to drive. Elwood's shot is up and it is good. So back to a four point deficit. We'll see if Beckett Berkey can come up with an answer. He's done so all night tonight for the Indians. He got his dribble picked up, though. He's got to go somewhere with it. Drops it off to Bender. Really Bender. Show, showing hard on those ball screens. Delphi St. John's are. See how they're showing pretty hard. Beckett gets out of trouble. Here's Trevitt Berkey working against Feathers. Indians being patient on this trip down the floor. Wanting to get a good look. And they're working up against Klaus. Has to work with the right hand. Looking for a little bit of a hesitation there. Gets to the rim. Can't get that one to go. It was a great move by Bender, but it doesn't go out. And it's going to say last touch by the Blue Jays. A fortunate call for the Indians. Yeah, he just kind of, kind of rushed that. He got that rebound. Probably should have just secured the ball. Kept his pivot foot instead of trying to go anywhere with it. One thirty-five left to go. Sean's going to inbound it for the Indians. He's going to have to get rid of it quickly. Going to go out wide to Bender. Bender goes up and takes that one away. Tate needs somewhere to go with it. Had to pick up his dribble. And we're going to have a timeout as Coach Triplett comes around. And it was a good timeout by Coach Triplett because if he doesn't take that one, there's a good chance we have a turnover. Yeah, yeah, they're really pushing them out, you know, starting their offense out. And what Shawnee's doing a good job of now is they stop ball screening because they, they were really showing hard on the ball screen. And, and when Delphus does that, it's going to be the screener that's wide open if he slips to the basket. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WOSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wosn.tv. Also available on Roku and Apple TV. So if you're Delphi St. John's, you've got a minute 23 left to go. You're down two possessions. You know you're going to need a stop here defensively. You're going to come out on the look here. You're going to go for that quick turnover, but at some point, you know, you Unfortunately, you're going to have to probably start sending them to the free throw yeah. line if you can't get that quick turnover. And know which ones you want to send there, too. See if, if Shawnee comes out of this timeout. See if they, you know, they stop setting ball screens in that last series because Delphi St. John was bringing two guys hard to the ball. Let's see if they uh, stay with that same plan. Travick comes free. He's able to get the inbounds. Works in against Feathers. Yeah, they're... Just going to space the floor. Delphus is doing a good job denying that lead pass to the wing. Johnny doing a good job with ball control here. There we go. There's and see what I'm talking about. Yep. Nice give back. A great look that time. And an even better job by Tate Bender underneath. He did a nice job of sealing off the defender so he couldn't come over and challenge Berkey and led to the easy two. And it was a great, great pass from Shawnee out of that trap. And exactly what I talked about, the screener kind of just flared at that time, and that's why he was wide open, then able to give it over to Beckett Berkey for the drive. On the other end, Elward got into attack mode. He got fouled. He's going to go to the free throw line. Continues to be 100% from the free throw line here tonight. He is yet to miss. Second shot on its way. And it is good. Back to a four-point deficit. Under a minute left to go in this one. Um, a little gonna, box set here. Continue to put pressure. Trying to see if they can't get a turnover. Trevitt gets out of it quickly. Finds Peshawn wide open underneath. You're not going to get it much easier than that. Yeah, that was a great vision up the floor. Here's Elwer. He's going to drive. Goes right by Berkey, but can't finish as Trevitt comes up with the rebound. Long pass over to Bender. Bender goes through the middle of the floor, and he's going to get fouled. This one's going to go on Feathers. Yeah. 
We've seen a big heavyweight battle tonight between Beckett Berkey and Cam Elwer. Berkey, 34 points on the night. Elwer, 33. But it's Berkey's team right now that's sitting in the driver's seat up six. Yeah, and Cam usually does a really nice job of finishing those around the basket, but that time he just left it a little short. First three throw by Bender is good. A big make. Makes this a three possession game. You know, I think one of the more impressive things about this battle that we've seen between Berkey and Elwer, they are both just sophomores. Yeah. Second free throw is good as well. Tate Bender steps up to the free throw line, makes two big free throws. His team is up eight, 32 seconds left to go. Elwer's going to drive off the wow. glass for two. And we're going to have a quick timeout by Coach Elwer. Coach Elwer's going to take the full timeout. We'll take it as well and be back on WOSN. St. John's Welcome back. Today's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 27.9 seconds left to go. Shawnee with the basketball. See how Delphus plays this inbounds. And they're going to foul immediately. Yeah, once again, I think it's really good that Shawnee always sends someone deep and you, you have opportunities to get the ball in bounds a little bit easier. So Tate Bender already made two big free throws here in this last minute. He steps up to take two more shots. First one on its way, and it is good. On that last drive of Cam Elwins, he wasn't going to make that same mistake twice. He got it really nice high off the glass. You're probably going to get the same look again offensively from the Blue Jays. Bender steps up and once again makes two big free throws. The junior coming up big here in the clutch. Elwer pulls up for three. That one's good. Cam Elwer just cannot be stopped as he is able to connect, have a quick timeout again. And I believe this is, now this one will be a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here as well. 63-58, St. John's hanging around. And what do you think they gotta do coming out of this timeout? Well again, they're gonna come out, and that was, first of all, a really good decision by Cam. I mean, he saw that the floor was crowded and he, he was able to take that shot, but. They're gonna obviously come out and face guard again with that, with the press. Um, again, if I'm Shawnee, I like that one four across the free throw line because they send two people long and then they cross screen and you can either get the screener or you can get the cutter because the screener rolls. See if they, now they're out of that box set again. So, well, at some point. So yeah, so Beckett's one R. So that's a different look. Nice job by Shawnee and Coach Triplett there to give St. John's a different look so they couldn't anticipate and make an adjustment there on that inbound. Yeah. So at some point, St. John's is going to have to take a risk. Only 18 seconds left to go. They're going to have to send a second body because you're going to need that turnover. You can't keep trading two for two. And you saw Cam Elwer able to finally get a three-pointer up on that last trip. Bender's four for four here in this last minute, making five for five as he continues to make huge free throws for this team. Yeah, that was a, a different wrinkle by Shawnee with that press break. They kind of had a little cross screen action. Bender's second shot on its way. That one rattles around but falls out. There's still a little bit of a window for St. John's here. We'll see what Elward does. He's just gonna go all the way to the rim. Can't get that one to go, fight for the rebound. And we're going to have a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Indians. Ten seconds left to go. 64-58. See if they run that same kind of box with that diagonal. No, here comes the 1-4. See if St. John's takes the chance, and they don't. This one is going to be pushed all the way out to Berkey. As Berkey just dribbles it around until he gets fouled. 
He's going to go to the free throw line. It was 6.7 seconds left to go. I think St. John's has ran out of time. Yeah. The Indians have done a great job tonight. There's been a two superstars on the floor, one for each team. It has been a great battle as Trevick Berkey is looking to put this one away for the Indians. Coach once told me when we were in the semifinals of the state and, and Chanel Bedford was a pressing team that you line up the same way, but you give them a different read every time, and that's kind of what Shawnee's done. Three-point shot, no good, and that one's going to bring in this one to a close as the Indians come away with a big win here in Lapham Gymnasium. St. John's came into tonight on a six-game winning streak. They were 8-1 overall. We knew everything that Cam Elmore was going to bring into this game, and Shawnee, a little bit of an up-and-down season. They had had a couple of losses prior to a win last night, and they've gotten the ship righted. Still undefeated in the conference play. Obviously not a conference game tonight, but being 2-0 in the WBL is a big deal. They moved to 7-4 and four overall. But how about that matchup tonight between Beckett Berkey and Cam Elwer? Yeah, that was really fun to watch. You know, kind of different kind of styles in their game. Um, and, you know, it's just it was great seeing the adjustments that each coach kind of made all night long. And it, it, this, this one uh, turned out like it was going to be a good game from the beginning, and it was. That yeah, was an excellent one to watch. We appreciate everybody tuning in and joining us tonight. I'd like to thank our sponsors one last time, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Union Bank, Metzger Financial Services, and Ace Hardware. We appreciate you. We cannot put these broadcasts on without you, so thank you so much. Also like to thank our crew working the cameras tonight. Megan and Zach doing a great job as always. We appreciate you guys and everything you do for us. Also Nick back in the studio doing all the editing. Thank you guys so much. We get the fun job. We get to watch the sports, the games. We get to just call it. You guys have to do all the other stuff. So thank you guys so much. Coach, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's First great. time I got to call a game with you tonight. I'm glad that we got to do this one, and we had a great one to watch. Yeah, for sure. it was a good one. One final time from Lapham Gymnasium. Shawnee knocks off Delphi St. John's. They come away with the big victory on the Saturday night. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.